So here we are again. This is um, the door of the castle in Enchanted Forest. And uh, we are coming closer to uh, finishing this page. And today I'm going to add more shadow because the plants over here, they need a little more shadow. And on the other side as well. So I'm going to do that today. And I need to make a decision too. I need to make a decision about how to color this section. These two things. It could be windows, small windows, but it could also be just something that is... Um, on the outside of the door and I also need to make a decision about the dragons and I already did an attempt a long time ago and that didn't work out so I started making coloring them gray and uh, well maybe I should uh, continue with this uh, idea of gray gray stony colors but first I'm going to add shadow I am looking for my polychromos paints gray and I cannot find it <laughs> I've been looking for it for several days right now now last weekend I took my pencils with me when we went to, to see uh, family members. I took the complete box and I... Here this is paint grey but this is the Brownsil one. And my box of pencils, it uh, tumbled over in the back of the car. And I thought I had recovered all my pencils. But I think the paint grey is still hiding in the back of the car so when my husband arrives i still i keep thinking this is the one this one is a dark one too but this is cold gray so as soon as my husband comes home tonight i will do an inspection of the back of the car so Let's use the brown gel paint grey with a sharp point for my uh, copy of um, Enchanted Forest. I really prefer my polychromos pencils because this paper is a bit slippery and um, it's just a fact polychromos does a better job than brown gel. But if I um, just keeping, if I continue using this, uh, my my uh, light touch. That is what I was. <laughs> oh man. I always want to call that a brain freeze, but the brain freeze is when you eat very cold ice cream, right? But this felt like a brain freeze too. <laughs> so I just continue my light touch in coloring and then everything will be uh, just fine. We are having a gorgeous morning again with uh, sunshine. It is still pretty cold, but not. I don't think it is freezing anymore. No, the pond in our garden, uh, there is no ice in it. There was ice in it for the last couple of days, but not anymore. 
there are some light clouds it looks beautiful I'm going to use my eraser because the um, the sunshine comes from this direction and I put this a little bit too high so I'm going to erase this and change the shape I want it more like this yeah that's better that is much better so yes it's a beautiful day it is uh, the month of December in two weeks time it will be Christmas good heavens Time flies when you're having fun. <laughs> and I am having fun, I can tell you that. I just love, love, love coloring. And it's not just that I love coloring. I also love, love talking to you. Last night my husband and I were watching a television, well it wasn't television, it was a, um, it was television program but uh, we watched it uh, a couple of days uh, after it had been broadcasted and that was a um, very nice talk of a Dutch professor in science. Robert Dijkgraaf, he's working in the United States, he's head of some science group in one of, in a university, don't ask me exactly uh, where and how, anyway, once in a while he comes to the Netherlands and then he does a talk, and this time it was about, about light, and uh, well i found that very interesting because when we color we are playing with lights so this professor was explaining how light waves travel and then how our eyes see light and what our brains do to interpret all those beams of light. It was very interesting. And maybe you have heard that uh, too. I've heard that already, that uh, insects can see more colors than uh, we do. And uh, to them, for example, bees, uh, for them, col uh, flowers have a lot more colors. There is, I believe it was ultraviolet, what they can see.
really interesting. And the professor also showed pictures of the universe. Very interesting. I find uh, the universe really fascinating. And I'm having a lot of questions about it. So last year I met a Belgian, uh, Belgian uh, physicist and I asked him everything. And uh, the conclusion was that I uh, don't understand anything about it. Oh man. I like to uh, come up with uh, my own uh, theories about things, but uh, mm -mm. no. So he advised me to go to uh, university and start studying physics. Well, I can tell you, I'm not going to do that. Because... I'm just not, uh, I, I looked it up, I did some research, is it possible to uh, study physics when you are 42 years old? Now the answer is yes, but you need to, de to do all sorts of tests and uh, exams before you are... Uh, allowed to start studying and uh, my knowledge of math mathematics and physics is just not uh, not just not okay <laughs> that is what i expected i have to say but I was hoping that there would be some sort of um, short course of physics, of basic physics. But um, I think it is just way too complicated to explain what I want to know in just a couple of hours. So is not going to happen. I would love to know how you put an idea, how you transform an idea into a formula. That is what I want to know. Einstein had this idea and then he translated that idea into a formula. How do you do that? But again, you need to know so much about mathematics. And um, I had math mathematics, but not to, uh, not in that, uh, on that level. Okay, let's add another color to this uh, shaded area. Dark indigo, polychromos. So yes, I'm very interested in science and... Um, but I just don't have enough knowledge of it to really understand. 
but I love programs and documentaries about it. I love the pictures of the Hubble Space Telescope. So beautiful. But I learned from a another scientist, another physicist, I learned a little bit about how color works. That is interesting too. Because we see color. No, this has something to do about how, why if you put your colored page in direct sunshine, sunlight, then eventually the color will fade. Unless you use very expensive paint or pencils that are light fast and this process will slow will slow down. So how come that the color fades away? And this uh, uh, this man is an engineer, a science uh, uh, physicist, and he told me that uh, light are actually light particles of or color particles photons and they jump off uh, the surface and the more particles jump off the surface the fainter the color will become so when all the particles have jumped off the surface so to speak then the color has faded away. Isn't that interesting? So right now, all tiny particles are jumping off, jumping on the page, showing you their color. Don't you love that? So we are playing with the photons. So I've been uh, coloring for about 19 minutes right now and uh, in, this, uh, in those 19 minutes all I did was uh, putting some uh, shadow in this uh, wonderful drawing. I heard that uh, Joanna Besford who made this beautiful book Enchanted Forest, she uh, received a uh, some sort of royal medal I don't know how to call it uh, in Dutch we call it a lintje you receive a lintje a ribbon but I don't think it is uh, called that way anyway Joanna received it uh, A short while ago, Prince uh, William uh, gave it to her, I think on uh, behalf of his uh, grandmother, the Queen of England. This is dark cadmium orange, and I'm going to put that on this flower. But first, 
the flower is so tiny and this tip of this pencil needs a little bit of uh, sharpening. And Prince William told um, Joanna that his wife, Princess Catherine, is very fond of coloring as well. Now that is very good. So, if you are watching Princess Catherine, welcome to the club. Of course, I have no idea if she, if she is watching or not. Pink Meadow Lake. There are so many videos, uh, nice videos. And I'm sure there are a lot of colorists who, uh, who do not watch uh, coloring videos. That's okay. That is completely fine. And let's pick a red one. Permanent Carmine. And let's add a little bit of chromium green opaque. This is a a green with a little brown touch in it, just a little bit. Now I did something that is very inconsistent. Maybe you can see what, what the problem is. Because I made the left side of this flower the lightest part. And because the light is coming from the right, the right side of the flower should be the lightest part. So I made a mistake. Let's fix it. Here is my... Derwent electrical eraser. So, and let's do it again. Here is the dark cadmium orange. So I'm now going to add more color to the left side. Because that is the darkest side. Then here's this nice pink meadow lake. And here's the permanent carmine. During that talk of uh, the professor yesterday, he also explained how this color, carmine, where the pigment comes from. And he was telling that uh, this pigment used to be made by crushing insects. And then this bright red would appear. Oh, poor insects. I don't know if that is still the case, because nowadays there are uh, many alternatives for many pig pigments. And of course he was also talking about lapis lazuli, the beautiful blue stone. It comes from Afghanistan, I think. It is a gorgeous blue stone. With a beautiful, beautiful, clear uh, blue. And that is where they make, uh, they used to make ultramarine. 
but I'm pretty sure that there is no lapis lazuli in this uh, pencil because that uh, then this pencil would cost a fortune. Now, of course, these flowers also cast a shadow in the back. So let's make that happen. It will look a little bit like this, uh, something like this. And for this one, something like this. I think uh, shading is one of the most the nicest part of coloring because it helps to uh, to let your drawing really come alive. So that is one of my favorite stages. And if you ask um, artists, they will, uh, many of them will tell you that uh, painting and drawing and yes, painting and drawing is all, it is all a game of light and dark, tricking your eye that it sees something that uh, it's almost real and recognizable. That is the most important thing. If you draw a bird, it doesn't have to exactly look like a bird as long as your brain turns it into a bird. So let's take a step back and look what the what the results are. This is really nice. Now on the other side of the page, on the left side, I did nothing. So this is what it looks like before the shadow, the shading. And then this is what it looks like when there is shadow. Lovely. So, I will add a little bit more dark indigo to this, uh, the shadows over here. And then uh, that will be it for today. I'm glad to be back uh, coloring. It was such a busy period. So uh, I am now uh, recording videos and scheduling them also. And um, next year I will do the same thing as I did when we were on vacation. I will schedule videos, make them in advance for the month of November and December. But I don't want to schedule that often because I like the idea that uh, that I can be um, well it's not live what I'm doing but uh, But there is some, how do you say, actuality, that, it, that the video is online, just 
a couple of days after that I recorded it. I like that idea. A light touch of Payne's Grey to fix here. So this is it for today. I hope uh, I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, see you next time. Bye bye.